Hi, Matt Bisogno here again and welcome to another edition of Gold Nuggets. This is the third in the series now and in tonight's video I'm going to cover a few things that maybe you didn't know you didn't know about Gigi's Gold. So we're going to look specifically at the big races feature and we're going to look at messing around with draw and other things in query tool and I'm going to show you how I've been having a bit of fun lately with uh, tote jackpot and the penny perms that you can do on there and I'll also show you very quickly something called PX form which is about to hit your uh, inline form on the race card any day now so quite a lot to get through so let's get cracking all righty now uh, you'll probably be very familiar with the race cards page and the content there usually that'll be one of your first ports of call each day to look at the day's racing and dig into the form um, maybe sometimes you go ahead a couple of days we have 48 hour declarations now hallelujah so we can look at for instance the good racing at lingfield on friday it's wednesday evening as i'm recording this um, and we've got most of the data there already for that uh, but what you may or may not be aware of is this final blue button in the row on the right hand side which is called big races and if we click on that uh, we get some some more interesting um, uh, race meeting locations we click on the plus button and we can open these up and you can see that uh, it looks like next Thursday is the Th Thiestes. I never get that right. Anyway, the, the, the big handicap chase at Gowron. Um, Doncaster's Sky Bet Chase on the 29th, which is a week Saturday. We've got the early entries for that. We've got the early entries for the Leopardstown uh, Dublin Racing Festival, a plethora of grade ones and um, high class Cheltenham Festival trials, which is a, it's a bit rude really to say that because these are all amazing races in their own right um, and should be treated as such. I don't think any owner is going to be devastated if they if they win one of these grade ones and only finish fourth at Cheltenham. Um, we've got the Betfair Hurdle, we've got the Winter Derby, and we've got a whole host of Cheltenham races in here. Now you'll see that some of them say possible entries. That's because the actual entries are not in yet. Um, and then a number of others have got the actual entries, which include the Novice Chase, the Grade 1 Novice Chases, which were um, framed, I think, earlier this week. So if you've been following, for example, um, my anti-post previews so it was the champion hurdle yesterday uh, where in those articles I've used things like pace maps such as this one with all of the uh, the entered runners now not all of these will line up on the Tuesday in the middle of March but they are that's that tells us what we can what we can hope to know at this stage or, or most of what we can hope to know at this stage about the likely pace scenario um, that is taken from this big races uh, option and then of course the champion hurdle race so if you wanted to get a bit of a head start a flyer on the action that's coming uh, two months hence <laughs> and I you know I'm kind of at the same time as advertising this I'm conscious of um, of supporting the uh, the kind of monopol the monopolization of national hunt racing that Cheltenham has um, but I do obviously I have to be aware that uh, many users will be as fixated on that as as I <laughs> I secretly am or not so secretly anymore um, with the instant expert is all up together and as, as ever if you click on the um, the specific insights you'll get some some detail there um, the pace tab I've touched on uh, you can mess around with that and obviously the form is there within the card itself um, the trainer and jockey form are not there so um, this is kind of a skeleton offering I guess um, one thing that is interesting is that um, because we take these files from our 
uh, from our license li- license or the Racing Post. We have Racing Post ratings and top speed ratings published, um, and those are I think they're weight adjusted when we have the weights published for the the, the races as well. So you can kind of say right, who's top on the top speed? Wow, it's Honeysuckle. Who'd have thought? <laughs> She's also top on uh, Racing Post ratings. And um, anyway, you can do as you will with these. I I was just conscious perhaps that um, this is not maybe as well known as might be useful. So I just wanted to um, bring that to your attention. Okay, what is next? Yes, um, a slurp of my coffee is next. Closely followed by a bit of query toolage. Now, query tool lives in the tools menu here. Uh, query tool, and um, it looks something like this. Uh, this is the filters tab. This is the summary tab. Now, I've been <clears throat> I've been messing around with this a little bit today because the um, the as you will know, because I've mentioned it many times before, the Southern have changed their all weather surface recently from fiber sand to tapita and um the fiber sand historically was a a, a very exacting uh, quite grueling galloping surface it was a real test end to end test of a horse most races were uh, were run fast from the get go um that doesn't seem to be the case on the new surface so far they've raced exclusively on standard to slow going um, while the new surface beds in and I'm you know at some point that will become standard um, but I wanted to have a look at the implications on draw and potential pace biases um, and I have touched on this in in previous articles I just want to return to it once more so what I've done here is in the um, in the date range uh, selection I've selected from the 7th of December which was the first meeting on the new surface after the switcheroo um, obviously south all flat all weather and I've put in here distances from six furlongs to a mile so they're kind of the sprint to intermediate distances I suppose they race at a mile and three and a mile and a half and a mile and six and two miles and very occasionally two and a quarter miles um, on the all weather but I'm kind of interested in these shorter distances I haven't put five furlongs there because that's a straight uh, a straight five and I'm, I wanted to look at the impact on the turning track so that's that's why it is as it is and I've also got a minimum uh, runners uh, uh, stipulation of eight uh, this particular view is looking at the pace scores so we do have some nulls where it's not been possible to score the run so I've I specified um, from one to four here and then as, as you can see in this box on the left hand side and then by clicking this radio button here what that does on the summary tab is it breaks down it essentially groups by um, these individual pace scores so like this um, to remind you if you need reminding four means led or uh, shared the pace or made all three means tracked leaders or chased leader or close up two is in touch or midfield or mid mid div and one is held up or missed missed break um, raced at the back, detached, last, raced in last, um, and so on. And if we look at these, um, if we look at this table, the suggestion is that the advantage is to held up, but we, we need to be careful there because the, the sample, the number of runners in the held up group is bigger. Um, so we're better off, much better off, in fact, looking at percentages and not just win percentages, but each way percentages and um, hopefully very soon um, in a few months time we'll have um, some percentage of rivals beaten data in here which will be considerably more instructive again um, as I've mentioned many times the these smallish um, data sets we've got to be careful with with looking at wins only at places or each way percentages are definitely better than win percentages and PRB percentage of rivals beaten is better better again when and where we have that information 
uh, published. In this case, we haven't. So we'll look at the each way percentage. And basically what you can see here is that um, in terms of a favored pace style or run style, um, there is very little in it. And on our chart uh, tab, which is defaults to bar, you can kind of see that there. Um, you can have the line and you can see that that actually kind of misrepresents because the the um, the uh, what do they call it? The the labels, I suppose I'll just go with that on the left hand side are such um, small differences between them. So it looks like um, it looks like a mid division uh, strategy is unfavored, whereas in reality, there's very little in it. Um, as evidenced by the bar and also by the pie, which I don't use very often, but in a case like this, we can see that you know that they are essentially four quarters, four pace quarters. So it looks a very fair track. That's the management summary. Is that so far? Um, whereas historically, you really wanted to be, generally speaking, on or close to the lead around Southall on the fibre sand. Um, nowadays on the new surface it does look like it's a it's kind of pace agnostic it doesn't really matter what your run style is um, if you're good enough you're going to have your chance in in most in in most race setups now I also wanted to look at the draw here so what I've done is I, I put it on actual draw I'm using the radio button there again um, and again I've selected from 1 to 40 which is obviously more than enough um, doesn't really work for the pie chart, but we can look at the line graph um, on each way percent, and we can see here that you can see on this um, this axis that the 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 horizontal horizontal lines um, represent differences of five percent in each way percent terms, um, which is a bit more meaningful. And what we can see if we if we drew a sort of a trend line, it would be a bit like a I guess a very shallow bell curve um, where the middle was favored and the inside and the outside were slightly less favored um, it's not it's not a perfect curve and nor would I expect it to be particularly not with so few winners to date um, but we can see that these outside stalls have uh, struggled in the main um, even on the on the kind of each way percent obviously trap 14 is quite is quite an interesting outlier but generally speaking um uh double figure stalls certainly from 11 and higher have been difficult to overcome so that's all i wanted to say there um essentially that you can do this for any track uh, any trip uh, and whatever um slice or dice you want to use within that so you can change the date range you can look at change the race criteria in here uh, you can select all sorts of things about the runner um, <clears throat> to suit your particular needs and um, yeah um, query tool is due for a major overhaul um, we are just my my database guru database dave um, is just finishing off a couple of bits of not quite housekeeping but small and important things behind the scenes um, and when that's done our focus will be exclusively on QT version 2.0 which I've talked about a lot and um, you know it's long overdue now uh, I'm personally excited to get this project going and to um, to really kind of turbocharge what is already a very helpful and insightful tool but to make it super powerful going forwards um, very excited about that so that is uh, what I wanted to say about query tool and draw and pace at Southall so far okay uh, in a second I'm going to show you some jackpot joy some fun I've been having with um, multi race bets and um, penny permutations so small stakes for potential big return but just before I do that I want to show you this is our development setup. I want to show you a new uh, feature or actually a reinterpretation of an existing feature um, which is coming soon to Gigi's Gold. And um, let's choose this 
five furlong race here where they've all had a few goes um, now on the full form tab we have something called proximity form and um, if you uncheck that you don't see it in the form down here but if it's checked then you will see on the left hand side a column of traffic light blobs um, green is good amber not bad and red mm, not so good so and um, what these what these essentially do proximity uh, implies closeness to the winner basically um, so if a <clears throat> if a horse has a green blob it was either very close to the winner or in this case it, it won the race so this horse is melodic charm and on the 17th of October 2020 it won at Wolverhampton so the 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 blue tooltip information text there says race winner now if we hover over this other green one from the 11th of December 2021 it says 0 0.18 brackets 1.1 divided by 6.09 and this means that this was a six furlong race in fact it was a six furlong 6.09 furlong race so that's the 6.09 number the horse was beaten a length but in actual fact it was beaten 1.1 lengths um, and if you don't believe me <laughs> you should believe me it's probably not the right race actually that's a shame right um, actually just believe me for, for the sake of uh, expediency it was beaten 1.1 lengths and if you divide the number of lengths it was beaten by by the number of furlongs in the race you get 0 0.18 so that's how we calculate these numbers so for example in the <clears throat> in the Southern race last time uh, where the horse was beaten about three and three quarter lengths in actual fact it was beaten 3.55 lengths um, in a race over 6.07 furlongs um, melodic charm was beaten 0 0.58 lengths per furlong in this good race on the 29th of February um, melodic charm was beaten 1.29 lengths per furlong and def depending on the number of lengths per furlong beaten the horse will either be get a green amber or red blob this is quite inter interesting information because we tend to be uh, completely besotted by the finishing position without paying heed to the, the distance beaten um, and a horse can finish third of course beaten you know 10 lengths and it can finish um eighth beaten a length and a half and and it's material how close the horse got um and and material and often overlooked by those guys and girls who focus uh, almost exclusively on this column called form on the main race card and in fairness to them very often they don't have much else to go on um anyway in the new world we can do this so we now have proximity form added to the inline form on the race card uh, so you can see that exact same data here um, for these for these races so that is proximity form coming soon and finally in this gold nuggets episode something a little bit different um, now this is the tote website as you can see other pool betting operators are available and uh, on different days uh, different pools will be of interest the one that I've been getting quite uh, familiar with in recent days and weeks is the jackpot now the jackpot is a difficult bet to win because you have to pick six winners and unlike with the Colossus win six where there is a consolation dividend for five or four out of six winners um, with the totes jackpot as soon as you hit a loser you are out so it's a more challenging it's a more binary existence um, which isn't great the counter to that the um, the safety net if you like is that whereas with Colossus the minimum stake is uh, I think it's 20p on the win six the minimum unit stake um, per line in the tote jackpot is now a penny um, so you can get 
fairly stuck in to your permutation with penny perms. And of course, if the pool size is uh, £10,000 as it is here, then one penny of that is 1% of that, which is £100. Of course, if you have unnamed favourites or things like that, you can have um, multiples of that £100. So you could, if two favourites uh, win their races, you could have two by two and end up trying to win, you know, working towards £400 for a very small stake. Um, so we're not talking about getting uber rich here. We're talking about having some fun and doing it in a vaguely structured way. Um, now, I have written extensively in the past about exotic betting. It is a big part of my um, of my betting approach. And one of the main reasons for that is because it's great fun. Um but just because it's fun, it doesn't mean it shouldn't have a profit imperative and it doesn't mean we shouldn't approach it in a serious and vaguely um, considered way. And I've written a couple of articles. They're quite long articles and they're quite involved. They start with the basics, as you can see here, uh, what are pool bets and why are they of interest? And then they go into the detail about the maths of it. So there's a takeout in pool betting and does that make it value or not? Um, I contend that it does. Um, and then there's a bit about how most people get staking wrong to one degree or another and then how to get it right and I I have um, not borrowed this I I guess not stolen it but I, I was I was made aware of this by this brilliant author Stephen Christ who used to write for the daily racing form um, the US equivalent of the racing post uh, and this book which is quite hard to get hold of but well worth it if you can find it is a fantastic book if you um if you like place pots or jackpots or exactors or trifectors or any kind of bet that involves more than one horse either in multiple races or multiple positions in the same race um this this is a really a terrific book um i've tried to disseminate some of the best information from that book into this post and the one that follows it uh, which is linked to hopefully at the bottom here um, so if multi-race betting place pots and jackpots are your thing then I, I, I very much hope that you'll get some some value out of this um, this two-parter I will link to it below the video um, so that is the how-to if you want to have a look at that now I want to show you the thing that I use to avail of um, to basically stake these bets sensibly. Now, where is the link? Uh, there it is, squirreled away. So this is what I use, and I, again, I'll put the link to this beneath the video as well. This is the Gigi's Pool Bets Ticket Builder trademark, because <laughs> because somebody might rip that name off. Um, so. The, basically you set you set up the parameters of the bet here and if we look at the tote screen again the jackpot tomorrow is at wing canton so um it doesn't really matter to be honest but i, I just i like to i like to set it up like this and pick six jackpot place pot scoop six you can see that you can choose a a three leg a four leg a five leg a six seven or eight leg bet here this is a six leg bet um and i'm going to set it up with penny base bets and let's say a hundred um let's say a, it doesn't really matter again 25 pounds budget um you obviously will set the budget that suits you now when i click that create update button there um this grid of a's and b's and c's and x's appeared with a bunch of numbers over here on the right hand side if you want to know what all that means the information is in this article um, so I'm not going to talk too much about that now. What I do want to do is um, I want to go to, let's go here, to the race card tomorrow. And this is not going to be my perm because I'm actually going to give it a, a wee bit more thought than this. But I want to show you um, <clears throat> kind of in rough terms how I, uh, how I approach a jackpot puzzle. So the first thing that I would do is I'd, I'd be aware the night before, as I am now, of where the jackpot meeting was tomorrow and I would typically um, 
<clears throat> have a look at the early odds. Now, of course, these early odds are uh, liable to significant change, but I just want to get a feel for the shape of the markets and where I might go narrow and where I might want to go broad. And immediately I can see in race one that there's a very short favourite, which has taken early support. Now, <clears throat> one always has to be a little bit uh, cautious of early support because it doesn't take a huge amount of money to move these prices the night before. Um, but I can see that there's a bit for Monviel, which is uh, a Philip Hobbs horse that's probably run better than sixth, sixth suggests. Um, the second favourite is relatively weak at this early stage and the favourite is strong. The favourite is odds on and strong. Um, and the thing with a jackpot bet or even a place pot bet, any sort of multi-race bet, is you can't go four or five or six deep in every race. You've got to choose your battles and um, you have to play the percentages as well in some, in some places. So uh, I probably am looking to bank on this horse here. Uh, in this sequence I'm just going to put that in there straight away because um, what I tend to do is I, I, I can I can frame the bet almost from the markets and then I go and look at the, the form book um, and work back from there so that's the first race it's um it's going to be an early bath or an, or a good start now the second race you've got a short favorite and then it's five to one the field and you can see the sort of one two three four um, there and now what I would on the market, what I do here is put this six to four, five to four shot on A, and the next four on B. I'd probably change that around. Probably change most of this around nearer the time. So I'm going to put A, eight on A, and three, four, six, seven on B. So eight goes on A, and three, four, six, seven on B. And if that doesn't mean anything to you at this stage, don't worry. And I might, depending on uh, where I am in terms of my budget, I might have a look at, if I liked one of these, I might put it on C, but probably I'm just going to take my chances with that. We've got a handicap chase here, another um, another favourite that's reasonably strong in the early markets. And then we've got, it's slightly more open race here. So what what I might do here, I'm just going to do this for the, for the sake of this uh, this video example is I'm going to put one and four the first two on a and I'm going to put there is a price disparity between them so the ones ignoring the bet 365 which we shouldn't do actually because they're typically the um, more credible early odds um, the disparity with most of the other bookmakers between the favorite and the second favorite is kind of a point and a half or a point whereas with um, bet 365 is only three quarters of a point. So these two, this one, if you if you use five to two, it's got about a 30% chance of winning. If you use seven to two, it's got about a 22% chance of winning. So there is a there is a bit of a disparity there. So what I might do is on these, I'm gonna take heed of this blue line for seven, and I'm gonna put three, five, seven, eight on B. Three, five, seven eight on b and i'm also going to put unnamed favorite on there and that gives me a little bit of extra coverage it also costs me a little bit of extra money um but that's a way to do that and then again i might have a look at those rags N not the two real um rags but the i might have a look at this 11 to 1 shot keep in mind that um if we think if you think that the the six race accumulator is going to pay more than 10,000 to one which is the maximum payout for a single winning ticket then there's no point doing the jackpot so you know you don't want to get too clever unless there's a big rollover in which case that's the time to be um to be creative again uh leg four we've got two joint favorites at the top so that's easy four and ten on a um and then we've got this Henry Gondoff, which looks like a John Joe horse. Uh, yeah, so you'd always respect money from that yard, even early money. Again, want to be checking this stuff much nearer the time. Um, but that's that's not going to be the two, four, six. It's not going to be the eighth favourite in all probability. It's going to be up here somewhere. It might end up being third favourite because there's um, 
these six are all very tight in the betting. So um, I, it's too it's too many to put six on B. So I'm probably going to make some uh, judgment calls here. You have to make some judgment calls because otherwise you run out of money. And let's say I'm going to go with one. Uh, six and three, one, three, six. So I'll put those on there. One, three, six, and I might put the other three on C just to give me one ticket um, running on <clears throat> if it goes another way, and that's going to be nine, two, nine, eleven. Uh, two, nine, eleven. I'm not going to bother putting unnamed favourite here because I've got they're, they're kind of joint favourites essentially. <clears throat> at the time I'm looking at it, so they, they've got an equal chance, so calling one over the other doesn't really make a lot of sense in this case. Um, this is a novice's handicap chase, tricky little race, and again we've got we've got kind of four horses that there might not be too much between them when, when the race goes off, so I might put all four of those, one to four, on A. One, two, three, four, and the favourite was a little bit shorter. Um, than the others so that might be a an unnamed favorite on b along with five so i might do that so five and fav on here and then in leg six oops leg six and obviously i haven't i haven't even looked at ggc i'm just looking at the market so this is not <laughs> this is not how i do the jackpot but um at the same time uh, I think if you're playing this kind of bet, you definitely, definitely, definitely need to be aware of the market and you need to be, um, you don't want to go off road too often, A, because you'll go past the 10,000 to 1 number, but B, because if you think you're smarter than the market more often than not, or more than once or twice in a six race sequence, uh, it's very likely you that is wrong, not the market. So, um, you know, it's just that that's um, that's a thing to be aware of. So, for example, I know people who do caveman perms on a play spot two by two by two all the way through and they studiously they 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 insist on not using any favorites. To me, that's madness. Um, but, you know, it's their money. It's their choice. And when they do hit one, they get they get typically they get well rewarded but more often what happens is that their horse makes the frame and the favorite does as well so they've done hard work and not got rewarded for it um i like to do less hard work and try to get rewarded for that when i can um in this last race then let's just say i'm going to put three in fact what i might do here is i might bank on three um because i can do insurance type stuff in the last race of a uh, of a place pot or a jackpot um, if I'm still running at this point, I can be betting other horses in the race to guarantee a profit or I can even, you know, if a horse is short, I can even lay it um, to cover my stake and a little bit of profit or whatever. That I'd have some options anyway. Um, I might, yeah, I'm just going to leave it like that for this video. So um, I need to resize my window, so I'll pause the video very quickly while I do that. Okay, and now what we can see at the bottom here is we've got 12 tickets. And what this is, is um, the clever little web page here has worked out between all our A's, B's and C's. Um, these A's, B's and C's, it's worked out the optimal combination of all A's. So that's this ticket. So 2, 8, 1, 4, 4, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3. That's that one. Um, five a's and any one b so this is going to be with this lot of b's here that look like c's because of the resizing um this is the, the third ticket will be a's with these as the b's the fourth ticket will be a's with these as the b's and the fifth ticket will have five fav on it as you can see there ticket five has got five fav on it and then we've got from six uh actually Six is the the one with the C C's on it two nine eleven that's that one there and then the rest are um, A's with two B's. Now if you wanted if you didn't want all of those combinations let's say you didn't want A's with you didn't want A's with two B's you could get rid of you could uncheck this one and it's going to get rid of those tickets and recalculate the cost. Um, I want them 
And then at the bottom, you've got times two, times three, times four. This is where you can essentially, um, you can uh, multiply your stake. So for, on my all A ticket, I always do times four or nearly always. And on my A's with one B, which I know there are <coughs> one, two, three, four of these tickets, I do times two. So that's one, two, three, four of those. So four of those times two. And my total stake here is £7.40 to have all of this coverage. Um, now, if you were to do this with the tote, you're going to have a problem with this 24, well, with the, in fact, you're going to have a problem with a lot of these tickets because there is a minimum ticket stake of 50p. Uh, this one's 48p, this one's 16, 24, and so on. So you have to, you have to get a bit creative with that. Maybe you just have a bit more coverage. Um, that's for you to worry about. I didn't want to go into like infinite detail on it. I just wanted to show you this tool and how um, it can help you optimally stake a bet. And the reason we would do this is because if we were doing this as a caveman bet, um, in other words, just all of the selections in each race multiplied by each other, it would be one times five times two, four, six, seven times eight times um six which is quite a big number so um this is just a slightly more optimized way of doing that and of course you've got if if all the more likely ones come in you've got more stake on it and for instance in the third leg if the favorite won that then the favorite <clears throat> is nominated by its race card number on most of the tickets and it's nominated as unnamed fav on all of the other tickets in this instance. So if the favorite won leg three, um, all of the tickets that were still live after leg two would be running onto leg four, if you see what I mean. So that's that, and, and therefore you can, you know, it's perfectly possible to have more than just this one ticket with four times on it. You could have that one with that one, with that one, with that one, and so on. Um, so yeah, that's all I wanted to say. I've been having a lot of fun and a bit of success um with these tote jackpots other pool betting operators are available um oops and um uh they've um it's definitely something to have a think about if that's your kind of thing this ticket builder will help you there's more information on it a video on how to use it another video on how to use it um on the page that i will link to beneath this one and it's time for me to shut up now. Thank you very much for watching, if you're still with me. This has been the third episode of Gold Nuggets. I hope you found something of interest and something perhaps you didn't know already. Uh, Matt Bisogna saying, speak to you soon and bye for now.